Do you know what the most iconic formula in Microsoft Excel for aspiring consultants is? This formula, or more precisely combination of formulas, is so well known, so ubiquitous in consulting, that there are tons of memes on all the consulting meme channels out there just about this formula in Excel. And this formula or combination of formulas is of course index match. Index match is a formula in Excel which is often used by more competent, more senior consultants to divide the cohort of consultants into the beginners and those that are a bit more advanced, specifically when it comes to Excel. Index match is considered a bit of a more advanced formula combination in Excel and many new joiners in consulting do not really know how to use it. So if this is true for you as well, do not worry no more, I will show you how index match works. I will show you in detail how the formula is working and then also put together a simple little Excel exercise based on a financial modeling situation and show you how you could resolve it with index match. Welcome to another coffee break with me here on my channel Firm Learning. This is the place where I want to help you to be successful in the first years of your career. As always, if you took any value out of this video at all, please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe to my channel to stay up to date. I release at least one video every week on Saturdays. But let's not jump into it. What is index match and why is it so important for consultants? So as a small motivation, let's just check out these hilarious index match memes. And if I just type in index match meme in Google, then here in the picture search, you can already see a whole lot of memes just around this topic of index match. I just pre-opened here a couple of them. Let's go over them. So here we look up no and index match. Yes, this is what you want to go for. And indeed, index match is often contrasted with we look up. And then we look up is often then considered the beginner, you know, the noob version of the formula, whereas the real pros are using index match. A bit similar to that is this one here. So we look up, no, thank you. But index match is what you need to do. Then next one, uh, Excel user index match. We look up again, the rivalry between index match and we look up. Of course, index match is what is considered superior here. And yes, then the consultants who are able of doing index match sometimes consider themselves of super professional Excel users. And then finally here, just a comparison of VLOOKUP and index match. So VLOOKUP is super popular, whereas index match is not so much. And probably the main reason why VLOOKUP is so popular is because it's much easier to use. But actually index match is much more powerful. It's much more flexible in the way how you can use it. And it's also much more error prone in many ways. And also it is faster. So Excel takes less time to calculate it. And probably this was something that was even more relevant in the past and not so much with the newer versions of Excel. But still index match is considered that a more and better performing version of the lookup. But now enough with these jokes, let's now understand how you can use index match. Let's learn how it really works. And I will contrast it with VLOOKUP just to make sure that you understand the differences. And the business setting, the business application that I wanna have here is a little small exercise. And this is something that you could easily then also be exposed to in any financial modeling type of situation. Now here we are facing the situation that we are a retail company. We have a number of stores. So now I just gave a unique number to every store. So these are pretty much now the names of the stores. And now each of these stores had a forecast for the year. So for the next year, there's a company plan and now these are the values that these stores are supposed to make. But now you want to break down these yearly targets to the individual monthly values, okay? And you want to do that by pretty much applying the historic distribution of the revenues across the months. And let's not just assume that one somebody from the finance department put together for each of these stores here. Now you can see that they are ordered. These are now the exact 30 stores that we saw before. Here we put together what the percentage of the revenues are that accrue in the individual months based on historic figures. So how this distribution was in the prior years. And here you always see that the total for each line is 100. So this is always the sum of these values but you can see that the distribution is quite different. So for instance, store number one made 18.8% of the revenues in January, whereas store number two made 7% of the revenues in January. 
And now we need to do the following, namely we need to multiply this number with the corresponding percentage of the historic split. And this is something where we would usually use a lookup for. And so what you need here is a two dimensional lookup to pretty much picking the right value for the store and for the month. So a two dimensional lookup. So let's now start by looking into how this would work with VLOOKUP. And now I will assume that you have an understanding of how VLOOKUP works. If you don't, then please just look it up. There are many resources on that online. I will later explain index match in much more detail, but VLOOKUP just as a basic comparison. And what most people will do, I can tell you from my experience, if they would need to do something like this, they will type in VLOOKUP, they choose here the lookup value, then here you fix now, of course, the columns, then you need to choose then the table array. So this is always the first table where, where the reference, the ID number is. And then here they choose uh, the columns that are relevant here, the 13 columns. And now for January, they then put the number two because this is then the second column and then an exact match. And then what you have here, this is now a percentage value, right? But what you have here is 0 0.09, which should be the value from January for store number six. So let's check store number six, January is 8.7. So I assume if you just take one more digits here, 8.7, this is now the percentage figure that we got earlier. But now of course the downside is, even if I now fix this reference here, if I want to now have it for February for the next month, if I just copy it over, it doesn't work because this two, this number is not dynamic. But here for February, I would need a three, right? So the next column in the historical split table to really make use of that. So actually what I have seen people do is that then they would actually just manually type in here a three and here a four and so on just to get all the monthly values correct. So let's just check here for six, eight, seven, 13.2. So this fits and then here 12.7. So this fits as well. But of course, not typing all of this in manually, of course, isn't really the way to go. And of course, now maybe for the 12 fields here, it might even work. But now imagine having to do this for a much larger table, with many more columns, then it just wouldn't be able to handle. And then what some maybe a bit smarter people would do is that they would include something like a helper line here, where then instead of writing the two out, they will just link it here and then basically do it like this. And now of course you have the advantage of being able to automate it in some ways. But now what do you do if for whatever reason here a new column gets inserted? Because now this doesn't work anymore because now the fifth column here is empty. Whereas you want to have the value for April in that column here for April, right? And so for all these kinds of reasons, using VLOOKUP in the classical setup, just doesn't make a lot of sense and is just not recommended and is just not really considered professional. And this is now really where index match comes into play. So how does index match work? And before we now dive into the numbers here, let me try to give you a bit more of an intuitive explanation to all of this. So index match is a combination of two formulas. It's a combination of the index formula, which is then combined with the match formula. So how do these two formulas work together? And how it works is that in the index formula, you define an array. So basically you define a range of a table. So certain reference, which can be somewhere in the middle of an Excel sheet, that is now in a new range where the formula looks into. And now, so applying this to this historical split table that we used, here we had all the numbers of the stores. So from one to five until in the very end you had 30. And then on this axis you had January, February, March, April, and so on. And now what the match formula does is it looks both into the rows and also into the columns and saying, okay, return to me what number here is, for instance, the store number three. And now because this is ordered, the store number three also comes into the third position in this array. And the same is now true for the second match formula that we will use to now pull up the columns. And here again, now for instance, it could look into, okay, what number in this array is actually the month of April? 
And here now, the way we have set it up here, it would be one, two, three, four, right? And then it can give me pretty much the number three in the rows and the number four in the columns to then put up this exact value. So this is how I use it and I can understand if now this is, was a bit hard to follow, but let's now jump into the practical example to really bring this to life. And we now start by setting up the index formula. And here now this is now the index for the store number six, but first we need to define the array. So the overall table that now the values are supposed to be pulled out. And here we now just mark this data table here. So now I just made a, a reference here from A3 to N33, just to mark this whole table here and I fix it. So now we have the whole array defined. So this is now the overall field from which Excel now will pull out the individual numbers. And now it asks for a row number and for a column number. So how this works is that now the very first field of this array, and here you see it starts at the field A3. This now has the row number one and the column number one. So this is field one, one. This one here, one below, this would be the row number two, because there are two rows, and then still the column one. This field here, for instance, this would be the row number one, two, three, and then the column number one, two, three, four. So three, four would give us in this field. So let's now just do an example for this store six January that we just had selected. And now for January, this would be the number that we would want to pull up, right? So the 8.7%. And this now would pretty much mean a row number of seven. So this is the sevens row, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So for the row number that he is asking you for, we type in a seven. And then for the column number, because this is January, this is the second column. So we type in here the second column. And now, this is already what we have. And if we now type this in, then of course we get exactly this number 8.7%. And this was this number here that we wanted. So far, so good. But now of course you want to make this dynamic because now you would have the same problem as if you would just use uh, the, the VLOOKUP in the prior example. And what you want to use here instead are now the match formulas. So both of these two numbers, both the column and the row lookup needs to be replaced by a match formula. And let's just start here by the row number. So we pull up the match formula and now he looks for a lookup value. And in the rows, you remember that we had the stores. So we now highlight here the store value. We fix the columns to be able to now always look up here the stores in every field. Now it asks for a lookup array for the match. And now you need to highlight the exact column from the exact length as you also did for the array. So here you see regarding the rows that the rows go from three to 33. So now here as well, you need to create a match lookup array that has the same kind of size, namely A3 to A33. And then the match type is zero. So let's now see if this was done correctly, because if it did, it should still now give us the 8.7 and it does, right? It still gives us the 8.7% or here because it's formatted as a euro value, 0 0.087. And now let's just check, just to double, triple check if this is really the case. If we evaluate this expression, and you can always do that by pressing F9. If you press F9 on such a thing, it returns the value that then a certain formula within a formula is actually returning. So if I press F9, I can see that this whole match expression is returning the value seven, which is exactly the one that we expected it to return. So just to explain it again, why is this returning a seven? Because the match formula, as we had here, it now gives a certain range as we now have defined it here from A3 to A33, this is how we set it up. So from here to here, this is what we gave as a lookup value. And now it takes this value here, this we here defined, the value six, it now goes into this range and it looks for this value six, right? So it looks in this range, where is the value six? And now of course it finds it here. And now it returns the relative position of this element in this lookup area. 
So now starting at the top, it counts one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it says, okay, this value that I found here, this value six is the seventh number, the seventh item in this lookup area. And this of course now is exactly what we wanted to do, right? Because we want to know what number it is regarding the rows. And this is exactly what the match formula is returning. And as we already know, this is now seven, which is why it returns a seven. So now let's do the same thing for the columns. And again, we use, instead of now manually writing it in match for, uh, for returning the column figure. And we do that again first by providing the lookup value. And now in the columns, it's the months, right? So you want to look up the months in the new lookup area. So here you now highlight or select this January thing. And now you fix the row. And now next you define the lookup area or the lookup array. And this is now here, this one. And again, you need to go over the same size exactly how your overall index array was set up. And you see that this was going from column A to column N. So here you now need to make sure that this is now going from column A to column N to really make these arrays um, match, right? So that now the first, second, third, fourth, etc. position of this array is the same as uh, the number of regarding the positions of the columns of the overall array that you defined here for the index. So let's now fix that as well. And let's now again uh, do the match type. And this is supposed to be always a zero, an exact match. And now again, it stays at the same number. So this seems to be correct. And if we now evaluate this second match formula, it returns a two. And this, of course, is exactly what we wanted to do. So again, how does this work? Here we gave the January as the lookup value. Then here we defined the array. And now it looks into this area, into this array, what position, starting here from the left, is this value that he's looking for, namely this Jan, the January value. And now here you can actually see that it's the second one from the left. So it returns the number or the index two. And now with these, uh, to look up values, pretty much the row index and the column index, we can then really look up exactly this precise percentage that we were looking for here. And now, of course, the beauty is if we fixed all of this correctly, and I already see that here now we haven't fixed this properly, so let's just check. This is fully fixed here, the column is fixed, this is fixed here, the rows are fixed, and this is fixed, so it should be fine. If we now copy it over, so it should be now able to directly give the correct numbers here everywhere. And this already looks quite good. So let's just check by including the sum values because now every row should return the number one. So I just included here the sums for every row because of course these were percentage figures and now the sum of all these percentages should add up to 100% to sue the number one. So let's just pick up the row 22 as a check. And here the store 22, you see it starts with 1.0. This is exactly what you have here, one or 14.2. This is what you have here. Then the last one is 6.9. So yes, it did seem to give us the correct values here. So now you directly filled all the percentages with this index match technique. And of course, the last thing that you want to do is that you want to multiply this whole thing with uh, the revenue, the total yearly revenue target in order to now uh, get the actual uh, targets that you have. And now you do that by um, multiplying it and fixing the columns. And if you do that, you can kind of pretty much directly see that now some numbers come up that look good. So now just to make these better readable, let's just work with these little things here. And now what you can already see is that now here the total adds up to exact same number as this total here, which is of course correct. This is exactly how it's supposed to be. So let's just triple check by adding a sum here. And then also adding the same sum function over uh, this range here. And now, yes, you can see that it adds up to the very same number as it should. So this is how it works. This is how you use index match. And just going back to the example that we had earlier, if we now here start adding a new column, for instance, or even several new columns, all of this should not be bothered at all because because we made this as a reference now again it includes automatically all the ranges 
So you can see that instead of going from A to N as before, now it just goes from A, from A to P. So just expanded that. And because it doesn't care about the absolute value here, uh, you just with the match, you just directly pull up the right index. And of course you could have also included the match function in your VLOOKUP to do that instead. But then if you start doing that, then why not directly using index match and get the other benefits like the performance improvements as well. So I hope that this was helpful. So the bottom line is that pretty much whenever you want to use a two-dimensional lookup, in most cases using an index match is the way to go. And even with only a one-dimensional lookup, there can be reasons where then you would choose an index match over just the VLOOKUP. Of course, there are good reasons to look VLOOKUP as well. Probably it's just easier to set up, it's just a bit more convenient and probably even the, the biggest pros, you know, are still using VLOOKUP if they just quickly want to do something, even though maybe they just claim or pretend they don't. But I mean, it's, it's okay, right? But just be aware when you use it and be aware of the disadvantages. And I hope that this really helps you now to step up your Excel skills because index match is something that requires a bit more of an advanced understanding. But once you got it, once you understand it, then it's still pretty quick and pretty easy to set up. And so I hope that I was able to teach you the basics that you have now this basic understanding and can now incorporate index match into your Excel toolkit as well. So I hope you found this helpful and this really helps you to use and apply index match for your own Excel models. As always, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below in the comment section. I will do my very best to answer every single one. If you took any value out of this video, please destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe and also turn the notification on with the bell icon to make sure that you really see every single video of myself. If you want to see even more content like that, you can also follow me on my Instagram. My handle is Firm Learning. And also do not forget to sign up for my email list. You can find a link to the sign up form in my video description. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate your time and I hope you got some value out of this video. The next video will be released next Saturday. So stay tuned for that. And until then, keep learning and have a good weekend.